Young Lord, also known as ASAP Bari, one of the founding members of ASAP Mob, and um, somebody that everyone kind of likes because of his brand Vlo and other stuff he's done as well coming up in the scene and shit. He posted a very interesting Instagram story that I think kind of relates back to what I was talking about when it comes to Elisa Majimbo. And she basically saying that how she hates sending money back home to her extended family in Africa. She feels like people in Africa aren't helping themselves and they're lazy and they're just expecting people in Europe or people who have good jobs to help them out when really they should help themselves out, blah, blah, blah. And I was saying how that's kind of mean, very short-sighted, and also goes against like what a blessing is because you have the blessing of making a living, doing that cool thing that you're doing. And part of that blessing, part of the obligation of having this blessing and part of the responsibility is to help people around you in need. Obviously, there's a limit, but just closing your fifth and being pissed off that some people don't have the same hustle, entrepreneurial, or just the same circumstances and luck that you have, is kind of out of order. And in this particular case, I feel like this is kind of relating to it because I feel like what Young Lord says in these Instagram stories here, for me, is maybe why I think it's important for people in general to be generous and to have like good habits because those good habits are then going to seep through to your friends and then they can copy it in their own way and then kind of set good examples going forward. Why do I say this? Because on ASAP Barry's Instagram profile, on his Instagram stories, he posted a series of pictures or stories of him counting money, being rich and shit, doing some fly shit, you know, motivational hood shit, right? He's got piles of money here um, that he's showing off, maybe from all of his runs, going around um, America, selling loads of vlone and shit. He's got a video of him sat in his car somewhere, flicking all the money off into the passenger seat and, you know, in a nice cool way, all these stacks of $100 bills, like clearly bawling and having a good time. And next post, he's got this. He says, curving me, only going to motivate me to make more money. Obviously, this is the classic, like, you know, revenge of the nerds comment. Someone like academics will literally tattoo this on their fucking stomach, um, which is funny because I think a lot of girls out there don't realize how responsible they are for the birth of like a lot of like nig cells right niggas incels and shit um through like you know turning them down or telling them they're broke when they're younger and shit and going for the older dude or the older drug dealer guy these guys then you know have to build up that resentment that hate and there's nothing better as a motivation than hatred and revenge and shit and then when they finally get on they treat women that they acquire through their fame and status and whatever with contempt you know just pure hatred and if you know anything about Bari you know how he kind of you know he kind of uh treats women as like playthings especially online he's kind of like you know disposable transactional relationships and most of it is based on you'd imagine an upbringing where you constantly getting curved by girls or in Bari's case if you're in a crew with ASAP Rocky it's probably a bit difficult to land girls because everywhere you go all the girls want to fuck Rocky no one wants to fuck the, the second in command you know what I mean he takes up all the girls he takes all the attention so and now you're finally on and you've got some motion and you've got some money doing your thing you want to remind them that hey you motivate me to make me this monster another instagram story he posts here is interesting too regarding um the flexing he said i stopped flexing because niggas be hating hate could get you killed so i'm chilling classic kind of niggery contradiction you just posted two pictures of you with stacks of hundred dollar bills and now you're saying i stopped flexing i don't understand but hey niggas be niggering next post he's got this that gets interesting he said so i copped a virgil may back two years ago and i still haven't received my fucking car yet All right cool maybe talking about patience talking about maybe not rushing things and just being annoyed that the virgil may that he bought he hasn't got it yet and again reference the last post where he said i'm not flexing anymore now he posts that he just copped a virgin may back two years ago hasn't received it so clearly flexing but not flexing who knows but this is where it gets interesting this post this is what I kind of want to talk about. So then he decides to go on a rant about coming up and about not asking for handouts. And I personally think this relates back to the Lissa Majimba thing because I feel like this is coming from a really real place, a raw place, in that most likely in the up in the beginning stages of ASAP Mob, when it was clear that Rocky was a star and he was the only one getting attention, and even someone like ASAP Ferg was struggling to kind of park you know create a path for himself as a solo artist and asap nas was still trying to rap and 12 was still doing his thing but when it was clear that rocky was the main breadwinner of the crew 
I think there was a lot of resentment going on about how things played out and about how certain people didn't look out for certain people monetarily and all that sort of stuff, right? And I'd imagine a lot of the kind of New York bravado, it's kind of similar to London people as well. You're never going to want to act like you're hurting or that you need to be helped or whatever. You're never going to do that anyway. You'd rather kind of sleep on a futon, eat beans and toast and never fucking say anything than let someone know that you're hurting. Anyway, this is ASAP Barry's rant. It's so crazy I've been broke my whole life. I started ASAP Mob and never received a check for something that I put together. And with that being said, Rocky made millions and I never asked him for a damn thing. All I did was set back and waited my turn. And I thank God and that I'm blessed to live the life that I live and have the chance to provide for my family. So why does Lisa Melissa Majimba? It sounds like to me when Rocky was coming up, and ASAP Mob were coming up, he was clear he was a star. He was the only one people fuck, fucked, fucked about with, cared for, whatever. It looks like when he was coming up, he wasn't really helping his friends, helping his fellow ASAP crew members with money. Yes, with looks, because you have to admit, when they first came up, whenever you saw Rocky, you saw ASAP Mob, ASAP Nas, ASAP 12V, Eels, um, the other guy that, that's got that brand, the skateboard brand, I forgot his name. Like he was always with those guys, Ferg, whatever. They rolled deep, rolled super, super deep. It was almost like how Old Future were back in the day. When you saw Old Future, you saw all the other guys, all Domo Genesis, all these type of dudes with them together. So he did do that as a good thing. Like, hey, I'm getting some shine. I'm getting some attention on my side of things. I'm going to make sure my brothers are around me so that they can get their shine and that maybe that shine could let them have their own path. But it doesn't sound like he gave them what people mostly want to actually change their lives and to give them a chance at making it, which is money. Money for studio time, money to buy beats, money to live, money to eat. That's the main thing niggas want, money. But most niggas won't want to ask. You won't want to seem like you're hurting. You won't want to seem like you're entitled or needy. So you just play it cool. But it seems like that resentment or that pain that he suffered is what kind of drove him to do what he's doing now. So that's why I think in general, people have to kind of be very aware of that sort of stuff and just treat people nicely when you're coming up and kind of share and give and support whatever you have with your friends so that later on, they can then do the same things in their part. Because what it looks like here is that Rocky, when he was coming up, was getting money from labels, getting his advance, getting his record deals, his endorsements, his collaborations, his whatever he was doing, which he kind of earned and hustled for and did really well at. It looks like when he was doing that, it was his money and his money alone. And then when these guys ended up making it in their field or in their lane, they also had the same attitude. So they, you know, they're all kind of now copying each other where they can maybe giving each other looks by bringing each other in, but they're not supporting each other with money, which obviously is going to hurt them in the long run. Next slide. So what that, so what that being said, no man should ask me for shit. <laughs> Cause when I was down and sad and broke, the only niggas that had my back were someone called Chi Brabri or Chi Rabri or Chi Abby and Jiggy Fio. So basically, basically, and at the end he ends it with no bap. Basically, that pain early on of ASAP Mob where Rocky wasn't giving none of his friends money has now led to Bari being this cold-hearted guy who wants to show you he's making a bunch of money. He wants to show you the trappings of his success. He wants to like, you know, um, first world problem complain about buying a Mercedes Maybach virgil edition two years ago and still not receiving it right he wants to do all this sort of shit but he doesn't want you to ask him for money because when he was down and out none of y'all niggas supported him which i think is a bad way to look at things because i think you should probably break that chain if no one supported you when you were down now that you're up you should support them you know just to kind of change it change the motion change the energy change the ambiance Next slide. I've changed a lot of niggas' lives for free. I did a lot for niggas for free. I know God got me. I know God got me. So I don't know, man. I just wish I just wish in general um, niggas would just be a lot more supportive of each other and try and help each other out, especially when they come up with some hard-earned money. I'm a big believer in like paying your friends. If you have a friend that's a fucking plasterer, a laborer, a fucking whatever, a plumber, like the idea of like paying your friends and like dinner and stuff and drinks is fucking lame or giving them fucking drugs and shit. No, actually pay them for their time, respect their work, respect what they do and honor them with that blessing. And I think just in general, if your friends are down and bad and hurting, help them out. Help them with no expectation. Help them without even thinking that you're going to get paid back. Because I think that sort of like those gestures probably go a long way than you actually know. 
And that person will then most likely, when they're in a position where they've got some shekels in their pocket, they'll then pay that forward and do the same thing for somebody else. And so on continues a nice little trend, a nice little motion of people helping each other out when they're down and bad with little to no expectation and shit. I fucking love that sort of stuff. So I would much rather see that sort of stuff going forward. But is it going to happen? Most likely not. Most likely not.